Hey, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, continuing after technical difficulties. Uh, we are doing a video on, we've been asked how we got together, how we got together as a couple, as a, a married couple. And um, <clears throat> we can kind of go, we can, you know, address the marriage bit uh, short, uh, quickly. But the how we got together, how we met portion uh, was requested because we have a lot of people ask us, hey, I'm an Aspie, hey, I'm an NT. Uh, you how guys did you get yeah, together? How did you guys get together? And um, and I'm like, well, you know, I've had people say, well, you, you don't have Asperger syndrome because you're married to her. And I said, well, funny, I, it's, you know, like of all the Aspies I know, half of them have been or are married. So it does happen. It um, often happens later in life or not, because as we've talked about David Finch's book, I think he got married in his mid to late 20s. I have no idea. I don't know. Um, wasn't an old man. He's been married a couple, what, eight, nine years, something. Now. Anyways. So he's about my age. Um, point being is that we did, in fact, get together. And we mentioned several times it was a little strange. So not to, like, use our methodology to get... Because our methodology is very unorthodox and very much socially not yeah, considered it, it, acceptable. It's sort of like so, asking the rich guy how he got rich and he says, I won the lottery. <laughs> like, it's not exactly recommended. No, this is a um, little worse than that. But anyway, so... You robbed the guy. I'm going, to tell you, I'm going to tell you, since I remember more of it than he does, because, let's face it, Aspie... So, Aspie who suffered brain damage. Yes. So... A few years ago, I was married to someone else. Said someone else and I were having marital problems. So I was getting out of my house as much as physically possible. For me, that meant I was taking my bike and riding downtown to the, the favorite hangout spot of all the weirdos known as Java Jungle, the coffee shop. I hung out there and would just read, which was near the river, so I could go cool my feet off during the hot summer, which was the summer that I met him where I was, you know, usually reading, there was occasionally some interesting people to talk to, and so I'd either be sitting there reading, being, you know, landscape that everyone got to either look at or chat to, or ignore, or I was chatting with someone. That's kind of how I ran into him. He and I kind of met, we were just kind of chatting, you know. I'd just go down there, just get out of the house, have some coffees. I usually went down on Mondays because they had an open mic night. So I'd like get to listen to stuff. Yeah, and that's kind of how we bumped into each other. Um, he was one of the ones that didn't trigger my my weirdo don't come near creeper. sense, the creeper vibe. He didn't trigger that. There was plenty <clears throat> that did. So he was one of the ones that would regularly get a hug. Um, there was half dozen or more of those that would regularly get a hug from me and most of the other girls. She was ten years younger than me. She's twenty three, married. I figured she, she was sort of a career track, career woman, and married, has a career, clearly not touchable, not in the dating scene, but a friendly person. So I So I we became talked. kind of casual friends, just kind of wave at each other yeah. at the coffee shop, sit down, chat, whatever. If you had pointed to her and said, you see that 23-year-old? You're going to marry her someday. I would have laughed at you. I would have, like, no way. Fast forward to the following spring slash early summer. Well, early spring, mid spring, next spring, a year and or so later, less than a year. But anyways, fast forward to that. Um, I was running into some serious marital problems, where to the point I was having an open marriage with my husband, which was not working, and had run into an old flame. This was one of those one of those big old flames. Like one of those where you see them years later and go, oh my god. Um, caused a few issues, and I was, nothing had happened at that point, but I was not in a stable state of mind at that point. And so I had to get out of my house. I got out of my house, got on my bike, headed down to Java Jungle. Well, there, um... I hadn't even, even made it into the courtyard where we all got to hang out and all of that. When Sean sees me, sees the, the friendly person, sees as an Aspie, sees that I'm 
emotionally vibrating, I believe is how he put it. I, I was... Yeah, like if if you could imagine, like um, some like a a oh, bugger, a centrifuge, how it kind of vibrates and it, it puts off like a lot of sound and and noise. Like you a plucked string. It, yeah, you feel it through the floor like a pluck string, and uh, she was the emotional version of that. And I know, I've clearly known by the night of Asperger's and what it meant. And I was going, well, if I perceive this, it must be bad. Mm -hmm. um, no one else there picked it up, but she, she's a friend. So I go over her and I'm like, hey, and how you doing? He kind of <laughs> takes me aside and says, hey, you look like you needed to chat. One thing led to another. He had me down in one of the quieter sections next to the courtyard. Not one thing led to another. We were kissing. No, 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 no. No, that, that didn't happen for a while. That was... One thing led to another. He had me, uh, he was giving me a hug and I was pouring my heart out. And I yanked her to a safe space because. It was clear I, I was not good to be around public. Like, I hate to say this emotionally. Imagine you've got a soda bottle and it's got a hole in it. You take it to the sink so it can gush out safely. Same idea. Yeah. Basically prevent spillage. <laughs> Embarrassing social. Social stuff. fallout. Social fallout. I figured I, at that point, I figured I'd just <clears throat> let her vent and get her back uh, to whatever. I think it was an open mic night. She could just chill out and relax. And... I started crying a lot, and he got me to calm down a little bit. And that's when he's like, "Hey." It had, by this point, it had been well over an hour I spent with her. Uh, I remember going. I I, I was only going to be there for a few hours. And I, I had just arrived when she showed up. And I, I don't think I've been there more than 20 minutes. And um, I was sitting outside in the courtyard because people, noise. I, I don't think I liked the current performer. I was waiting for somebody I liked to go on. And um, and so, yeah, she showed up. And I just remember going, I got to go. But you don't seem you're like you're not in a safe space up here. Uh so I think I, I just told her I had gotten some movies from Redbox. I was going to watch them that night. Literally, I was about to leave, go home, and watch movies that I hate were due the next day. And, um... Yeah, so at which point he's like, hey, you want to come to my place? I'm not trying to pick you up. It's just you look like you need a safe space. So, um, he... Like, he when your friend invites... Literally, my head was like, I've had friends tell me to come over and watch movies because they knew I just needed, like... A few hours in a quiet space with someone friendly because the world was you know eh, on me and so just I don't know if any of that works for anybody else it works for me where just a few hours with somebody who's a friend who's safe who's safe I got <clears throat> friends who've done it to me just invited me over their family like hey we got this movie come watch because uh, they knew that I was just having a rough time in life and, and just to have uh, people around you who, who didn't hate you and liked you and and of course, entertainment. <laughs> and of course, he gave me a hug, and his body reacted. And <laughs> not the most fun. He apologized profusely, and he's like, like "It's serves. been a long time since I've uh, I've given a hug to a pretty girl." Da, 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 da. Um, and so he takes me back to his place. I proceed to cry more on his on his bed because he was in a roommate situation where you've seen the videos of that room. Early videos. Early, same room. early few videos. Same room. Um, I curled up on that bed with him, and he just held me and let me cry and work through a number of the problems that I was having, including the turmoil with the the flame and the husband and da 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 da. da. And then he unveiled the fact that he actually was good with his hands, massage wise. He she felt worked. okay. <laughs> she felt like half dome. Yosemite. I felt like rock. Rock. Um, he ended up working a number of knots out of my body, and um, the release of endorphins and stress and all of that got me a little excited. Um, but because I was trying very hard to keep He's him, not going to touch that. Yeah, he was not going to touch that. I was fighting down the uh, the. Um, the same reaction you get after a fight or flight response usually fuck me now. And so been around women who've had that reaction and 
I went for it once in my life when I was much younger and incredibly much dumber and <laughs> did not enjoy the experience in the long run. So I have had women... Wise choice like, on both of our I'm parts I'm so to glad not. I'm married because now I'm, I'm all kinds of safe so I can help people and like, I want to screw you, but you're married. Yes! Yes, now go, now go on the couch. Go on the couch. Yes. Anyways, so sit over there. That <laughs> night, he dropped me off at my house. And after after we watched uh, well, both uh, movies. Yeah. I sat in my chair. She she sat on the bed, and I just zoned out and watched the films I wanted to watch. And uh, she got to be in, in a, a safe, quiet space where no one was going to bug her for like three and a half hours. Yeah, I don't think I got home until like middle of the night or something. But Early morning. I didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah, I don't remember. But so that that started a, a closer friendship between the two of us. Um, he became basically my confidant, and at the time, really became my best friend. And then shortly after grew he and quick. I, hmm? it grew quick. Yes, it did. And shortly after he and I really started hanging out more, before it became carnal, um, he met. He took me to to go help his friend Annie who was, who is now my best friend too. Um, she was someone who's kind of a shut in, has fibromyalgia and she needed help. I didn't realize at the time how good she is in her career, which is, I mentioned is in the culinary field. I'm not going to get more specifics, but it's in the culinary field. And so she's got a lot more knowledge and experience than uh, I understood at the time. So he's like, hey, I got to go help my friend. Do you mind if you come, if I take you with me? Because it was either that or he have to take more time to drop me off at home and da 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 da. I'm like, sure, no problem. As long as your friend doesn't mind. And he's like, no, she'll be fine. So he takes me up there. I get to meet her. And that turned into a great friendship. I've got a tattoo that matches one like she's got now. Butter and bread, chocolate and cookies. Chocolate and peanut butter. Chocolate and peanut butter. Coffee and cream. Mm hmm She and I just clicked. That's for another day. Flame and gunpowder. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Um, so she ended up basically signing off on, hey, if you two want to get together, I'm okay with this. And he was also a former roommate of mine, uh, which was how we ended up meeting. I moved into a roommate situation. She later moved out of, and so did I. Actually, I moved out of that roommate situation into a much more permanent one. Shock. <laughs> Anyways, after that, um, at some point shortly after Annie and I got to know each other, um, Sean and I started having carnal relations. It was kind of accidental. He was sparring. We were doing wrestling moves, and then it kind of got us both hot and bothered, and, you know history from there um the problem open marriage for her at the time yeah so. i was in an open marriage and um one thing led to another and between my husband the flame and him i ended up being pregnant so I ended up making a divorce um told the flame that it's like, no, we're not doing this because he was also married. So like I said, very socially unacceptable. Um, you ever have those moments in life when you look at yourself and you go, I don't like this person. Why am I doing this? What, what, you know, like you're doing stuff and you realize maybe you shouldn't be doing it. And then like at some point you sort of shake yourself. <clears throat> yeah. I'm in being an idiot. I need to stop. Move on. Um, so, yeah. That's kind of what happened on that one. Um, so, I moved out from my, uh, from my soon-to-be ex-husband. By the way, pro tip, one of the reasons why she broke it off with the old flame was he doesn't read and is not terribly intellectual. And uh, she but saw sapiosexual. my... sapiosexual. <laughs> sapiosexual means attracted to intelligence. Same here. I'm very sapiosexual. Um, he, beauty is nice, but you got to have a conversation after. Um, and... I, I've dated some very beautiful women in my past, and, and almost all of them, uh, have, actually all of them, have been incredibly intelligent, uh, in, including the, the ex-girlfriend I mentioned at the beginning of the series, 
is very beautiful and very intelligent. I have a history. If you look at the one continuous factor among all the people beauty I date with, dated is beauty and intelligence. Unfortunately, there's a whole lot of crazy as well. You're not. I didn't say I was excluded from that. <laughs> However, I'm much lower on that scale. Sure. So, um, so she saw that I had like a large amount of books. I, you know, I, I, I and I authors that books. I have read. Sci-fi, fantasy. Um, she's gotten into some. Actually, she had. Have you read much uh, Jim Butcher? I don't remember. Jim Butcher was. Green Brand. Uh, yeah, Jim Butcher was a huge. Uh, <clears throat> He's the author of the Dresden Files. Anyway, um, so yeah, we we started dating. I became her her, her live-in boyfriend. <laughs> Like two weeks well, after I moved into our current place. Yeah, I um, I pointed out that uh, she had had an open marriage, which was her husband and me. And I had never been in this situation. I'd never wanted to date somebody in an open marriage. I had always swore to myself I wouldn't uh, because of the social connotations. A and pro tip, Aspies out there, people in open marriage is generally a bad idea. What I did worked out it shouldn't have it's the one in the million please don't aim for it don't aim for it at all try and stick to the ones that are not in a relationship it's a much better idea and the one the crazy yeah the one crazy is good anyways so we moved in together i i he kept you know hinting at wanting to you know marry me things like actually, that actually i didn't hint at wanting to marry her for well, you started hinting at it. Five months later. Mm. Five months later. Anyways, so he started hinting at it, and all of a sudden he proposed before I had given birth to my uh, to our now daughter. Um, I had been very adamant I don't want to get into a committed relationship because I don't know if it's because of the hormones or because of the actual relationship. He convinced me to give it a shot, and... Best thing we've done. Yeah. We actually, I, I said, look, just uh, say yes to marrying me and we won't put a date on it. But I would like to be within a year because five, ten year engagements just strike me as weird. Uh, I don't understand why. Okay, look, you're going to date somebody for ten years. That I understand. You're going to marry somebody for your whole life. That I understand. But being engaged Being for engaged years? is like. Keep pr is like promising the guy down the street selling a car. I'm going to buy the car from you. Yeah, right? Um, you know, buy the car. Don't buy the car. But none of this promise or you shit. Anyways, so that's our, that's pretty much the sum up of our story, of our story of how we got together. We apologize for it being a long video this time, yeah, but the, it's and, a long story, so. Yes, and one of the things that, if you're asking how did you know that you want to get married, uh, it really felt like, I don't know what marriage feels like, but I kept waking up to this person and, and liking what I saw. Um, we, we, she was my best friend. Uh, she was my friend. She is still my friend first, my wife second, my lover third. She is always my friend first. And that's the only way it works is, is um, that we're, we're each other's best friend. And I, that, that's not what works for everybody, but that's what we needed. And it's a perfect, remember I say that Asperger's comes in a thousand flavors? Well, marriage comes in a thousand flavors. And so as long as it's a flavor that works for the two of you, that's what matters. Um, so I, I would definitely say that for me, that the relationships, uh, gay or straight or whatever, that seemed to really uh, stand out to me as something that I could do were the ones where they were friends first and everything else second. And uh, one of the things that I kept finding funny was that we were still dating, uh, even though we lived together. Uh, well, actually, even before that, everyone thought we were married. We had been together for maybe two months. And every time There's... we ran into somebody, Oh, how long have you been married? And we were like, um... We've been dating in a number of weeks, like not even months, number of weeks. And um, like we've only been together in total for two and a half years. Less than. Less than, less than two and a half years, including being married. Which we celebrate our one year anniversary Very soon. Very soon. So um, 
<laughs> hey, my my first time having an anniversary of any uh, of any kind was with her, and then I had a wedding anniversary soon with her. So that'll be interesting. But you did you did ask. It's a very long video. We apologize. Um, long story. Long story. Have a great day or night. Talk or, to you next video. We'll see you later.